Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saver. I am your host, Brandon. And I am Nick. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Well, I think I'm doing better than you today. I am in a great mood today. Uh, you have Gatorade Zero on your desk over there, and I already I know. know what that means. That makes me whatever, <laughs> but it, it's just, it's fine. It's just not as good as other things. Like, like Powerade Zero. Like Powerade Zero? Yes. I don't know. I think Gatorade Zero is supreme. However, you just admitted that you don't drink the zero sugar, so. Because it's Gatorade. Gatorade oh. makes me right. run faster, jump higher. It's like And I agree with you radio that Gatorade flyers. Zero is better than Powerade Zero. No. Your opinion doesn't matter on this one because you don't drink either one of these. So. It still matters because it's Gatorade. I'm still fired up from earlier. I gotta be nice. I gotta go back to being nice. I'm trying to get you fired back up on the podcast this time. No, I got you fired up right before the podcast. People don't want to hear that. They do. Trust me. Fired up Nick is quite fun. Oh man, I'm gonna keep poking the bear until you're all fired up. Maybe if I speak in this voice. Does this make you angrier? No, it just makes me want to not talk back. Why? Because I can hear myself in the background (laughs) sound like a little squirrel. Well, I can turn that off. Watch this. Now you have no mic. Try talking. See. Nothing. See, that yeah. works out good. Perfect. I'll just turn your mic off. Oh. Um, no, yeah. So I could tell you're a little fired up. And you know what? That fits today's episode. It does. Because you know what I've gone to talk about today? Sometimes you just have to go slower to go faster. I get what that means, but it kind of doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's kind of an <laughs> oxymoron, right? Very much so. Yeah, no, but it's true, though. Like, sometimes in business, you have to slow down to go faster, right? And as a race car driver, it sounds like a very difficult thing to do because I like to go fast. Sure. But it's actually something I learned in racing a long time ago. And it's actually been one of the probably the greatest lessons I ever learned in racing was because on a you know, as a race car driver, you have all this horsepower and you want to go as fast as you can all the time. And especially on a dirt track, dirt tracks change. And so the track itself, the conditions aren't always conducive for using all your horsepower, right? And I suppose you could probably use this in drag racing and all this other stuff as well. But really, basically what it comes down to is you could have all the horsepower in the world, but if you don't have any traction, you're not going to go anywhere. Makes sense. Ask anybody who used to drive an old Dodge Viper. (laughs) Those things used to crash a lot. A lot. Um, But the point being is that, you know, these racetracks, you know, when you're in a race and the, the... track starts to wear and it becomes what people refer to as dry slick which is a slipperier surface um it's like driving on ice that also sounds like an oxymoron it is um (laughs) it's dry it's really dry the moisture comes out of it so it dries out and it becomes really slick so does it get like glossy yeah yeah yeah, it it looks like ice like it becomes very very slippery and that doesn't seem fun in a race car it's a blast it is my favorite thing to race on because it takes the horsepower out of it, and it comes down to the driver at that point. Like, sure. how good are you with your feet and your hands? Like, that makes sense. you got to control the car that way. And it's one of those situations where the guys who can't con- figure that out and can't control that, they don't win those races. They go backwards really, really fast. Sure. And so that's one of those scenarios in racing where it pays to go slower. Because by going slower, you're going to essentially go faster. You're going to go around the track faster than guys who are trying to go super fast. Sure. And so... It's it's kind of a fitting way of looking at business and, and kind of your life in a lot of ways that we all want everything now, you know? Yep. And one of the ways that you could break this down is in like your real business is, you know, a lot of us, if it's available today, I'll just buy it because it's available versus waiting for the product that maybe isn't available, right? Yep. And sometimes that can be in a case of importing a product versus, you know, bringing in, you know, an American-made product, right? Well, an import product, they buy them in bulk. They're sitting on the shelf. They're waiting for you to buy them. Well, and the, I mean, the technology is getting older as it sits there, right? Right. I mean, that's part of it. But there's a reason why they're sitting there, right? Sometimes waiting for that quality is worth the waiting time instead of just getting something that may not last. Correct. And I think that goes back to, you know, a lot of our listeners can, you know, probably contribute that to their business as well. Because if you think about like a cabinet maker, right? I can go to Home Depot tomorrow and pick out cabinets. I mean, I could probably go down to one of the big box stores, find a bunch of cabinets or find stuff that I want, and, and I can install that in my house. Yep. Or I can go to a custom cabinet maker, and yeah, my lead times might be a little longer, but the quality of that custom cabinet is going to probably be better and more fitting to my project, correct? Well, and like you said, it's a custom cabinet, and you can get what you want, and not necessarily just what they have there that you can settle for. Right. 
And and that's kind of my point is that it pays to slow down sometimes, right? Yep. Going slower, it's a long term play, right? It, it's I'm not trying to finish today for that. I'm trying to set up tomorrow. Yep. And and that's my my big thing with you know sometimes slowing down to go faster. And, and as you kind of break it down to tools in your shop and things like that, it's easy to get caught up in the you know the time alone, right? I used to use a, you know, fortunately our lead times are pretty fast now. Nowadays we're building machines in only, you know, two to four weeks on average. Um, but there was a phrase I used to have to use a lot more when honestly we weren't as vertically integrated as we are today. I mean, we were a lot bigger company today than we were. And when we were a smaller company to produce the same product took us a little longer. We had less people, we had less machines. We had to do a lot more manual stuff. And I used to tell people, and I still believe it, that lead time is temporary quality is forever for sure and it's because of the fact that yeah i can rush out something and it's probably not my best work right right and i'm guessing part of the um taking longer time to get things done was waiting for quality components to be available and not just using anything that would work right i mean that that is a big part of it because especially you know let's talk covid years right when there were supply chain issues everywhere one of the biggest supply chain issues was in electronics. You know, obviously, if you, you, I'm sure everybody heard about it, the, the chip, microchips and how many vehicles from Ford and Chevy and all them were sitting there with no chips, right? No computer chips. Well, those same things happened in electronics for CNC machines, right? Motors, for example. Mitsubishi, one of the largest manufacturers of electronics, they had an issue with being able to output enough product for the demand. And... The issue was, wasn't that you couldn't get products, right? I could go get a different motor. Mm -hmm. There was other companies that were not experiencing the same problem because the demand for their product wasn't as high, but their demand for their product wasn't as high because the product wasn't as good. Right. And so it would have been easy for a company like ShopSaber to say, you know what? I'm going to just substitute this out for a lesser product, but we were very picky about what, what we used. And so we explored a lot of different products during that time. And I would say 90 plus percent of them just got declined. Like we, they didn't pass our testing, but you know, there's a few that we did end up working with that have since been, you know, utilized in our, our production and they're really good products. But the, the majority of what we did was we gave the customer the choice, you know, do you want to wait or do you want to proceed else, you know, elsewhere? And you know, the majority of customers chose to wait. I mean, smart. the vast majority of customers realize that like, they invested in this product for a reason. And I think the realistically, the majority of them are probably pretty happy. They waited nowadays, you know? Absolutely, yeah. But, you know, as you kind of look at your business and you kind of look at, like, decisions you're making, you know, growing a business is the same way. You know, we, we're talking about products. We're talking about things specifically related to buying a machine. But think about your business for a moment. When you talk about growing one, right? Does that happen overnight? No. Not at all. Most cases, right? No. I mean, there's the select few people who just get lucky, right? Sure. They hit it on the head, and overnight they go from. But I think I think when you talk growing your business, though, that's going to be coming up with new products or new way to do things, right? And rush, right. rushing to get those things released or getting those things out is going to lead to problems, right? So yeah. step back and take some extra time to make sure that you get 100 percent right before you throw it out there to people. Right. That's a big part of it. You know, that's actually a really good point of it is developing a product, right? Anybody wants to develop the next big thing, right? Mm -hmm. The next product. But if we just rush it out the door, it's probably going to flop more than likely versus becoming the next big thing. For sure. Because you missed some of the minor details, right? And, you know, as you grow your business, you have to think about that stuff. Like, for me, it just doesn't happen at all at once. I mean, I, the one thing that I always relate back to is, at, you know, people want, as business owners, all oh, want every night and weekend off. I don't know how to say this nicely, but good luck. Yeah, it's not the recipe for success. Because as business owners, like, you don't get nights and weekends off. Like, it just doesn't happen. I still, you know, like, this to this day, like, I'm still involved all the time. But, like, the big thing with that is, is sometimes you have to actually do the work, right? Absolutely. So you have to slow down and, you know, don't put your dreams in, in front of, you know, what it's going to take to actually achieve them, right? Well, and I think if your customers or people around you know that you're willing to put in that extra time and that extra effort, they know that that's going to be there in right. the future when they need your help too, Right, right. Well, the other thing I think about is how many shops start, you know, it's a one-man shop, two-man shop, three-man shop, whatever, right? 
They start as a family-owned business, right? But they just jump right into it being a 10-person job. Probably not a lot, right? No. I mean, the, the first thing you do is not go out and hire a bunch of people. Not, I mean, it's probably not a good plan to go through, right? I would I mean, bet that those businesses probably don't succeed a whole lot. Because you're sinking money into all your employees with not enough, not it, enough work to keep them busy? It's overhead, right? Yeah. yeah, you're just sticking money into overhead. I mean, it's just the same thing like, okay, I'm going to start an ice cream shop tomorrow. Let's go buy a 20,000-square-foot building. Like, wait, what? How is that the first step, right? Right. Like, then, you, then you have to sit back and hope that enough people come through to right. cover all that cost you have put into it. But it's kind of like the you know the the point is is like you know McDonald's's empire wasn't built by buying four hundred and forty seven stores. Right. It was built by building one. Right. You start as a small company and you and you start building it and you grow that way and then it becomes this massive franchise and you have all these employees. But like you can't grow companies overnight. You can't make big financial business decisions for you know the size of company you are that that matched maybe what Google's doing right yeah like well. you can't you got to be relative to what you're so again you got to slow down it's easy to get ahead of yourself and say, oh so and so spends a million dollars a year in advertising so i'm going to as well right well, well you might put yourself out of business trying to do that real quick too or the the adverse effect is you start trying to pretend to be that company but you can't – it's supply and demand, right? Yeah. You, you can't supply people with the demand now you've created. Yep. And does that actually help your business or hurt your business now? In the long run, it's probably going to hurt your business. I think so. Like in the short term, you're like, oh, my God, we're so busy. But once that reputation gets out that you can't deliver, you probably aren't going to have a business for a long time. I think, I mean, I think you see that a lot in like the restaurant business, yeah. right? A lot of new places pop up. Right. And everybody's like, oh, sweet, this is cool. Let's go support it. Super happy to be – and then – Right. You know, the first few months is super packed and super busy, but then, you know, a few months down the road, it kind of tapers off because there's a million other places you can go, right? And that per- may- that restaurant may not have been prepared to have that influx of people or they knew they were going to have it and went overboard to, you know, to satisfy the need of that demand at the beginning. But then once it went back to normal everyday business, they had way too many people, way too much staff, way too much overhead to be supported. Anybody listening to this that lives in a small town, can relate to that story because if you live in a small town here in the united states i can promise you if you're on a group facebook page for your town there's always somebody saying how you need another restaurant yep always like it dude like i've grown up in small town usa my entire life and or another quick trip yeah that's exactly it like it's just (laughs) like literally they need a quick trip or they need uh another restaurant like that's what everybody complains about but then as soon as they get those things they don't they're not sustainable correct they don't last because there isn't enough people to cause that to to stay around. So it's like, and there's a reason why those places aren't there to begin with, right? Correct. Because they know that it's not sustainable. Correct. And that's what I was going to say is like, Quick Trip doesn't just go build in a random town. Right. They they have a bunch of market research, and again, they slow down before they go fast. Right. Yeah, they want to expand, but their Quick Trip's not going to go build a brand new Quick Trip in a town of 344 people. Yep. If there's not enough traffic to come through there. Right, and especially when the next town is 25 miles away. Correct. And nobody besides those people that are right there. Right. 344 people are not going to keep that business alive. No. Right? And, and we all want it. Trust me. I live in small town. I'd love to have a quick trip in our town. We don't have one. But it is it is what it is, right? Yep. But then I moved, and I'm now in a different town, and guess what we have? Two quick trips. On both ends of town. On both ends of town. <laughs> but the, the point being is that you have to slow down to go faster because sometimes our wants – aren't what our needs are, Correct. right? Yep. I want to buy that 100,000 square foot facility. I don't need it, right. <laughs> right? It's not going to make me more money as a company. So let's go into the 40,000 square foot building and then once we right. need and get to the point where we need the 100,000 foot facility, we'll move again. Yeah, or you could be like ShopSaver and we can move four times in five years and that's really fun. I'm glad I was here after that. We needed 100,000 square foot. My dad didn't want 100,000 right. square foot. right. Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was it was not fun moving that much. But honestly, we kept growing so fast that it was just like we kept getting ahead of ourselves. And so eventually, we finally you know got to this point where now we have a really good you know facility that we've been able to vertically integrate, and it's made a big difference for us. But we didn't get there overnight. Yep. I mean, it's been two and a half decades of us working towards this. I mean, think about that like 25, 25 years to get from you know J- dad's garage in the garage yeah. to now into this massive facility. 
right? All the things that happen in between there. That's 25 years. That's, I mean, that's a long time, but at the same time, it's not because it's probably flown by. It's flown by. Yeah, for sure. It's been, it's been really awesome. Like to watch what my dad's been able to accomplish over the years and just to be a part of it and to learn from him and the, learn from the people that are in the company that have taught me so much. Like it's, it's fun. But again, I've had to slow down. It's easy to get ahead of yourself, right? Yep. You want to run. Sometimes you just got to walk, learn the ropes. And I, you know, I teach that to our sales guys. You know, it's easy for sales guys to jump in and want to just start selling machines. But even with the way we, we do our training programs here and the way we teach our employees how to, you know, kind of bring themselves up to speed, you can't run before you walk. Right. You got to learn the product. You got to learn the processes. You got to slow down. Trust me. I know you're excited. It's a new job. Everybody wants to come out and be a hero. Don't be a hero day one. No. Just learn it, right? Figure it out. It's okay to be the new guy. Like, figure it out. We'll get you there. But as you kind of look at your businesses and you think about that, like, it just goes back to what we're talking about, you know, slowing down. Because the one thing that I think about is like, yeah, I would rather have 10 guys in my shop doing all the work so I didn't have to, right? But the overhead there doesn't make me profitable out of the gate. Right. I'm probably better off to be the one guy in the shop doing the work. And maybe I'll buy a piece of equipment, right? Yeah. CNC router, perfect example, cabinet shop, right? I know a lot of one- and two-man cabinet shops that make very good money because of the fact that they're able to keep the overhead down while still being able to output some of the you know more impressive jobs that you've seen. Right, so they may not do as high of quantity, right? but the quality and the amount that they can get done without overhead, or with less overhead, I should say. Yeah. Instead of just having, you know, like you said, 10 guys right. doing whatever, five times as much work or whatever it works out to be. You have just yourself and your machine doing maybe half as much work, but with only 10% of the overhead. And to me, that's the recipe for growth. For sure. Because growth isn't in, I have 10 guys, but no work. Yeah. Right? Growth is in, I have one guy in all this work. Yep. So now it makes sense to bring in a second guy. And keep growing, right? It's a lot easier to grow that way than it is to grow the other way. Yep. Okay, well, I've got the guys. Now i got to find the work. Like, that's pretty tough. Well, and how do you think that's going to look to customers when you're talking about it? Like, look, i got 10 guys just waiting on to make these cabinets for you. I can have them done by Friday. You know, right. that type of thing. Like, what is that going to look like to people that you have all these people but not enough work? It's Some people kind of are going to love it because they're because the they person. they get it right away. Yeah, they're an opportunist, right? And they're going to, oh, I see the opportunity to buy something and get it now. Like, yep. right? I want it today. But- the reality is the, the vast majority of people are going to see it as a red flag. For sure. Right? They're like, well, if you have 10 guys, why don't you have any work? Right. Well, did you have a poor business plan or is it just slow yeah. or what? Like what? It's going to raise a lot of questions for sure. And that's where you have to think about that as a, as a company. Sometimes slowing down builds better value. Absolutely. Your, your product is more sought after when you're able to build a quality product. When everybody has it, yeah, it's cool to say everybody has your product, but if nobody likes it, is it sustainable? No. How many products have you seen come and go that they became a hit? I mean, everybody wanted them, and then suddenly they're gone, right? A lot of things. Right. I mean, can't think of anything specific right now, but I've thought of that. I mean, even recently, I've been talking to Natalie. Me and Natalie were talking about something. I can't remember, I can't remember what it was, but we had one of them, and I'm like, you can't buy these anymore. Like, what happened to them? They looked super cool when we got it, but now right. it's not around anymore. Gosh, I wish I could remember, I I could remember what it was. It's going to come to you. It will in like 30 minutes when we're done with 32 this. 32 minutes, exactly. Um, but that's the thing, though. I mean, like, if you're, I guess if you're in the business to just sell a whole bunch of things at once and then just run away and shut down, right. fine. But why would you get into business to just hope that it lasts for a year and then be gone? <laughs> right. And that's the, that's the thing is it's like there are so many one-hit wonders, right? Yep. And – you don't want to be a one-hit wonder with your business. Being a one-hit wonder in certain things maybe works, but a one-hit wonder in business is usually not a very profitable thing long-term. No. Right? So it, it makes sense for you to just look at the bigger picture. What's your overall goals? You know, and I'm a huge, I'm a huge uh, advocate of write down your goal. Okay? Now write the goal that's after that. And now write one more goal. And the reason I say that is because it's easy to focus on what you're doing today. But what comes after that when you achieve that? And what comes after that? I always, Be I always have the next step that you're reaching. Correct. For, right? Because if you know where you're going next, like I've always said, when you're running up a set of stairs, right? 
we all ran upstairs as a kid, right? Yep. Mom and dad said, don't run on the stairs. You ran on the stairs. Don't do it much anymore, but. Right. Yeah. Well, we're old now. We can't get <laughs> up the stairs as easy. Um, but the point being is you didn't look at the stair right in front of you. No. You're looking up the stairs at what you're, where you're running. It should be the same thing in business. You got to look at the top of the staircase, right? You got to see how far you're going. And hopefully the staircase never ends and you right. always have a place to keep going higher. And that's the truth. Like you have to think about that in business. Like you are building a set of stairs and the hope is there's no top stair. I mean, I think it just goes back to things we've talked about recently. Like, don't just be satisfied with getting to a certain point and calling it good, right? I always look to be better. I always look to grow. I always look to get bigger. And, I mean, again, if you're not growing, you're probably doing the opposite, right? Usually. I mean, you're, you're generally, somebody's growing around you. Yep. And if it's not you, then they're the ones taking your business from you. Yep. And it, it kind of goes back to don't be the person that, is trying to be so big so fast that you end up being the reason why you aren't successful. I mean, that, that's, that's kind of where it's at, you know, is it's like when you start looking about the speed that you can travel, you know, and again, I relate it. I relate it to a lot of things in life, you know, and it's same thing with hockey, you know, our hockey season just ended. And I think about that, like we all started the season wanting to be where we were at the end of the season. But if we had not practiced and done everything that we did all season long to get there would we have gotten to that goal ultimately no probably not unlikely i mean we were played the yesterday night we did the parents versus player scrimmage. That's how, how you feeling after playing last night my left knee hurts uh, i found out i'm not a goalie did your kid do your kid score on you no i did not let it i, <laughs> po- I poke checked him yeah i i was willing to you sac- would never live that down i was sacrificing the body to not let my kid score on me probably smart he had a one-on-one chance with me though he had me dead to rights. I'm going to be honest with you, but I screamed really loud at him. <laughs> and then I dove and he just missed the puck. That's funny. So I got lucky there. He uh, would have told you about that every day for the next oh, eight years. I'm pretty sure he, yeah, I'm pretty sure he would have sent me an email every day about it. Um, but no, we, uh, yeah, we got, so anyways, we got to play against them yesterday. And like I said, it was, it was fun because at the beginning of the year, like when we played against these kids, I mean, it was, it was rough. Like they were, there was a lot of, I don't know if I don't want to say lack of talent because they were very talented kids. They just were a lot of disorganization, I guess is what you'd sure. say. Yeah. They didn't know how to play as a team, yeah. right? They knew how to play as individuals. And at the end here, like it was actually impressive to watch them move the puck. Like they knew that they weren't going to beat some of the adult skaters one on one. So they would skate to them and then pass the puck yep. and then skate past them and then get the puck back. You know, it's, I mean, it's good teaching for them. It was. It was yeah. fun to watch though because like where they were at the beginning of the year to where they are now. And like watching my son, there was the first time my son has skated out in a year. He has a he plays goalie. Yep. So this year, at the parent skate, I told him, "Do you want to skate out?" He said, "Yeah." And I said, "Skate out. I'll play goalie." He's like, "No, you're not going to play goalie." I'm like, "I'm going to play goalie." <laughs> and then one of the other dads said the same thing. And so, I I borrowed two sets of pads. In fact, I borrowed pads from one of the guys here at work. And uh, yeah, I, anyways, I got all the stuff from him, and uh, yeah, I ended up I ended up playing goalie last night. And I'll tell you what, it's. Uh, it's amazing how much harder that position is. Like coach, I coach it, right? Yeah, right. I, you got to work on this. You got to do this. It, like I was off angle one time and they scored a goal on me. The, the other team did. And <laughs> my kid yells from the bench, you got to get on angle. <laughs> like, well played kid. Yeah. That's yeah. what I've yelled at him all year long. And I was totally off angle. And I just, well, how do you argue with them? That's like, hilarious. Yeah. So completely off topic but i just thought i'd share that it was pretty sure. fun we uh we did that and but like i said it kind of related back to the going slower to go faster because we had to take all year long to teach the kids the skills necessary to get them to the point where like i said at the end of the year it was it was a lot of fun playing against them i think the final score was like 13 to 14 something like that but offensive me and me and ryan were not the best goalies <laughs> i will say that if they made a pass we couldn't move did you use regular size nets yeah. Well, you guys can cover three quarters of them. And you still let them kids score? Come on, man. Dude, some of them are older kids. It wasn't just the young kids. Oh, they're like nine? No, we had the Bantams out there with us. Oh, well, it's... Yeah, we had like 15, 16-year-old kids with us. Still. Come on, man. I just got out of the way of their shots. You're just sometimes. not fast enough in your old age. Dude, I couldn't move side <laughs> to side. I told you that. I would be. I would have I blocked I would, almost all the shots that were shot at. I give you credit for even going out there because I would flinch and probably turn my head every time they shot because I would be afraid. Of I just closed my eyes. I just don't want to get hurt. <laughs> I tried <laughs> playing catcher in baseball once and it lasted about four pitches. I'm like, this sucks. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm not doing this. You know, I uh, it was fun. I, I was the only thing that was like honestly scary at all is when they 
they'd shoot at my head. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> if I don't catch this, I'm going to take it right in the melon. Yeah. I don't want to, do not no want chance. to get hit in the head. No chance. But I made a few glove saves that were, I was pretty proud of. Like, pretty quick glove. I was like, oh, I get this one. And I got it. And I was like, was yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Fan it around and yeah. show off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, I definitely held it up in front of me and asked the kid if I had something he was looking for. <laughs> I would talk some trash. I had to you take have my opportunity. You have to. Yeah, and you have to. But I'd say uh, most of the goals scored on me were scored by the, the older brothers of the kids on our team. So I think only our team actually only scored two goals on me. So should have been zero. I know. <laughs> I'm so upset about it, too. But you have a goal to set next year now. To, to no never goals. play goalie again. Oh. <laughs> That's my or next goal. Or just score none. Let my score left none. knee is telling me do not play goalie again. Well, use your right knee more. I that's what I was wondering. Like, I, don't the know right how angle. I hurt the left because you were so always bad. on the wrong angle with your left knee. Yeah, I don't understand it though. I, I, don't know. I had pads on. I, don't <laughs> I, don't, I know knee. nothing about what the hell you're talking about. So oh, it's terrible. Just throwing it out there. Yeah, I know. But back to the subject. <laughs> I kind of relate it to slowing down. Like it comes to, when it comes to your kids growing up, right? Like my oldest kid is like 23 now, and I worked in the golf business my entire life while he was growing up, which was like. You know, 14, 16 hour days all year long. I, I didn't, I wasn't around for anything when he grew up, right? So once we had little kids again, I was like, you know what? I need to get out of this business because I don't want to miss their everything they do growing up, right? Yep. So to have the ability to have like a Monday to Friday job, to be there with the kids every night, be able to go to their sporting events, be able to do those same things, those are the things you have to step back and allow yourself to take in, right? And not just allow everything to fly by and be over with before you know it. That's kind of how I, I relate it back to that. When you brought up this topic, that was the first thing I thought of is stepping back and having more time, you know, with the kids and not just letting it fly by and be gone in an instant. That's actually a really good point, to be honest with you. Like, it's something that I think in life in general that people don't do enough of. No. And it's another reason the whole time you're saying that. Yeah, I'm thinking of like, yeah, when my kids were little, like how much I worked and how much I, I had to put into the business, right? Yep. And I, the the thing that kept me going was them, right? The reason I kept putting the hours and I kept doing it is because I was trying to give them a better life and, you know, give them something. But it's something that you think about is like, that's another reason, though, to think about investing in equipment and, and investing in your business and, and doing certain things so you can slow down. For sure. Right? Yep. Because we get so busy in life, in the hustle and the bustle. And, I mean, think about, like, I think about when I was younger, work wasn't Saturday and Sundays ever. Like, when my parents, like, when I was a kid, my parents didn't work Sundays. Right. Sunday was, like, church day, and, like, you just, it was family day. Right. It, you didn't work. Nothing was open, right? Very little stuff was open. And then as, like, the world is gone, and, like, then the super Targets and the super Walmarts and the 24 hours, you know, a day, they're open now. Like, you think about all the businesses that went to 24-7, right? And the world just got so busy that it became normal. Yep. And it's like now it's like the next generation, like as we get older, our generation's kind of going, whoa, 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 we need to slow things down. Like it's time to slow the world down a little bit. Like we're, you know, and now some of it's turning into like people are like, yeah, well, they're lazy. Well, they're not lazy. They're just trying to embrace life, right? Sure. And some of that embracing life can go back to this. Like rather than having to put in 40 hours a week trying to produce one job, now you can get that job done in an hour because of the equipment Mm -hmm. and then you can dedicate more of your 40 hours that week into something else and therefore instead of having to work 80 hour work weeks you can actually work a 50 or 60 hour work week and still be as successful as you were running the 80s yep and still have those and you get 20 hours times and day off yeah to enjoy the time doing those other things it's probably my favorite thing to hear is like how many customers of ours there i have a customer of ours that and i've told this story i think previously but i'll tell it again is we've we've got uh, a customer of ours that called up Chad and I actually one year and it was in December and he, he was really kind of emotional about it. And he's like, you know, I just wanted to thank you guys because this machine has changed my life. And you know, his, his explanation was that all of his life in his cabinet shop, he's never been able to take time off with his family around the holidays. And this year was the, th- that year, not this year, that year, the year he called, he said, this year is the, is the first time I've ever been able to say that with two weeks left in the year, I'm done. It was December of 2022 because it was right after, it was? Start, right after I started when that okay. guy called. And it was literally like probably the first week I was here. Yeah. And I was like, that's really freaking cool. Yeah. Like to be part of a company, like to be part of a company that can allow somebody yeah. to do that is really cool. And that's the fun thing about it is, that, you know, it goes back to you can have anything you want in this world as long as you help enough people get what they want. Yep. And it's the truth. 
like if you all work towards a common goal and like everybody like works together, you accomplish a, a lot more. And it's it's that exact thing. Like you're helping a company succeed, but he slowed down, yep. right? He it slowed him down personally. Like the business didn't slow down. He didn't lose business. Like he accomplished more in less time and therefore was able to slow down and enjoy life a little bit, right? Yep. And that's the side of it that like you have to think about in business is it's it's more than just what do you do today, but it's what am I setting myself up for tomorrow? Yep. Like how am I going to handle adverse situations, right? What happens when somebody's sick, right? If somebody's sick in your business, suddenly now you become hair on fire and everything's crazy, right? Because, oh, my God, we're short people. Yep. Or if you set yourself up appropriately, right, slow down, look at those situations before those situations arise. Damage control, Yep. right? That's something that I've always talked about is I'm big at is – you're big in is trying to look at – situations that could occur and sometimes people call me a worry wart right because i think about the what happens if this situation plays out but it's also like you said you're being prepared for the what if slowing down i don't know that if that's planning ahead i don't know is really worrying i mean we all know those things can happen right so why not have a plan in place to fight that fire when it happens Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, I think it's just setting yourself up for success long term. And for again, sure. you know, again, adding the CNC machine, people have, I've heard it from people. Well, we're keeping up right now. We don't need a CNC machine. But what happens when you can't keep up anymore? Now it's too late, is it not? You waited too long. Or how about instead of keeping up, add a CNC machine and allow yourself to add more work right, and more profit because it takes you, you know, however much less time to. Right do those things and now you're ahead of the game and have free time to add more work i just remind people of covid as much as i don't want to have to relive that again but i remind people of covid how many people said i have enough guys to keep up i don't need machines and then suddenly the guys weren't coming to work anymore they couldn't come to work right they were they we there was a bunch of cdc guidelines shutting everything down you couldn't go to work anymore right or how many people just weren't, didn't feel safe going to work? Or how many people knew that they could not go to work and still get paid, right? Yep, yep. I mean, you run into those scenarios. Or how many businesses got busier during COVID? There's a lot, believe it or not. Because they were ahead of the curve and well, were able to continue production because they had things in place, right? Well, that's, that's one. I guess that's where I was going with it. But I'm thinking about before we get there, how many businesses actually picked up work during COVID? Do you think sign shops got busier? Probably not. I think they did. Think about all this stuff. It say, you had to stay right, so make, six feet back. Sh- and, making all, sure. Yeah. Like, you know, and do you think, you know, okay, yeah, restaurants, they probably got slower, right? Yep. There are industries that got slower. But, okay, now everybody's working from home, right? Do you think the desk companies got busier? Or the laptop companies? The laptop companies. Yeah, you think about all these yeah. companies that were not expecting this massive inrush of people, right? Yep. So when they got busier, unexpectedly, do you think it made sense for the companies that actually had kind of forecasted for that growth? Like to have, okay, well, we bought a CNC machine and I'm glad we did now, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. I mean, there's companies that I know, Hatch Exhibits is a perfect example of this. And and I know Chris over there, the owner of Hatch very well. And Chris and his wife, very nice people. But they trusted ShopSaver equipment. They they put a lot of trust in us for their their, business. Hatch business and Hatch is a display business. It does like trade show displays and those t- event displays, and that's what they did. How do you think the event display business was going during COVID? <laughs> Pretty non-existent. Right? Pretty non-existent. Yeah, but because he put his eggs in the basket of a CNC equipment, right? He tells the story, and I, I wish he was here right now to tell a story. And maybe we'll have him on the show one of these days. Rodney will teach me how to do this call thing, and we can call people. <laughs> um, but. Uh, Chris said to me one time that I shut the business down. He's like, I had to shut the business down. I realized there wasn't enough business in the, you know, for me to keep these guys on staff. He said, I was shut down for three days because as soon as he shut the business down, he knew all the families and the you know stuff going on. He started going to work on trying to become a, a supplier of like the, you know, the sneeze barriers yeah, and yeah. The, you know, that yeah. stuff. And then uh, he did masks and cause he had, he had, all these machines that could make that kind of stuff, the gowns and stuff for the hospital. And obviously during that time, remember all the influx of people needed those things, right? Yep. 
he literally figured out how to do it in a weekend because he put his time into it, right? He slowed down and said, it would have been easy to go, oh man, there's nothing for us to do. But he was one of those guys that pushed forward, right? I'm going to put the time and energy into it. And then he opened back up that next week with all of his staff doing something completely different than they'd ever done. But it was largely able to be done because of the equipment he had purchased. Yep. Without that equipment, he had just had people. Yep. And His like, people weren't magically going to learn how to build that stuff over the weekend. And like you said, he put in the effort to figure out right. how to put it to use outside of the yeah. normal ways he was used to. And if you want to see a video on this, we actually have a video that talks about this. So you can go out to our YouTube channel, check it out, type in Chris McCormick. Um, you'll find it. It's Hatch. He, he's he got a whole story about this. And it's, it's pretty cool to think about the versatility that the machine gave him. And I'm not saying, I'm not taking the credit for it. This is Chris's you know, thought and his, you know, forward thinking, but I was just proud to be able to be a part of it for sure. And now Chris owns several of our machines. Um, he's got a plasma machine. He's got a couple of routers. His event business is back strong as ever. I mean, the guy, the guy's a rock star. He actually, if you guys came to AWFS last year, all of our display at AWFS was built on shop saver machines. It's one of the coolest booths I've ever seen. It was so awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. But it was, it was built on a shop saver machine pretty cool yeah so i'm pretty pumped about that like we utilized shop saver technology chris and his team created it but again it, it kind of goes back to like being able to come full circle like who would have ever expected for chris he's like i bought a machine from you and now i became his customer yep how cool is that it's full circle for sure again it's going you know it's slowing down you know just looking at the bigger picture right and it, and it worked out and it's, it's one of those things where, like, you have to think about where you're going with your business and what your next steps are. And hopefully today's episode kind of, like, makes you really think about that stuff. You know, it's really about not rushing through life. Yep. And I think we all get caught up rushing through life. And I, I don't know why, because where are we going? Let me ask you that. If we're rushing through life, where are you trying to get so fast? Probably somewhere you don't need to be to that be that fast. Somewhere that's not ready for you. Right. Right? Is that not the best way to put it? Like, you know, it's kind of like if my appointment's at 2 o'clock, but I rush to get there and I leave at 1, but it's only a 25-minute drive, why did I rush to get there? I risked three speeding tickets, ticked off 10 drivers, and I got there super fast for no reason because they're not ready for me. And now you could have used that time doing something productive that you're going to have to do later. Correct. And that's exactly it. Now you've just put off something that you could have been doing. So it's like, sometimes it's about time management. It's about slowing down, utilize where you are today, right? Yep. You're, you're in every situation. I'm a firm believer. You're in every situation in your life for a reason. There's a reason why you're in the situation you are today. Mm -hmm. Don't half-ass it. Right. There's zero reason to half-ass your day today. Like, and I, and I want people to honestly think about that. I want, you know, there is a, God, it was a Denzel Washington. God, I can't remember who said it. There was an actor that actually said it one time. There was a quote, um, and he said something along the lines of, like, to get uh, – yeah, it was Denzel Washington, I believe is what it was. And, and he said something along the lines of, like, um, to get something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. And it's the truth because – you cannot continue to do the same thing over and over and over and expect different results, right? Yep. You have to do the work that maybe is uncomfortable sometimes. You have to do the work that maybe you'd rather not have to do, right? I'd rather go really, really fast and not and just get this done. Like, just take the time doing it right. Otherwise, you end up doing things multiple times. Right. And if you're truly trying to get to that next step or that next chapter, the only thing holding you back is you and doing the work. Is, See, it the, is it the one where he said dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately f fuel disappointment? Is that the um, I guess I don't know the whole quote. I just know that that one phrase of it where he talks about to get something you've never had, you have to do something you've Do what you got to do so you can do what you want to do. That's another one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's But it, it's the truth, though. So sometimes it's, you know, we all get caught up in the I want to – not go to work and I, you know, everybody wants to have private jets and live like a rock star, right? Yep. The reality is there's a 1% of the world that's going to live that way and the rest of us are going to have to work our ass off. Correct. So just work your ass off and if you get lucky enough to be the 1%, good for you. But if you plan on being the 1% and you're not going to work your ass off, I'm going to promise you you're probably going to fail. Probably 100% of the time. Or you're going to do something illegal to get there. Right. Your choice. <laughs> but you're definitely not going to get lucky and fall into something like that. It just, it's unlikely, yeah. you know? There's a lot of, I mean, it's something that I think that you see in a lot of famous athletes. 
they hit that rock star status so quickly and it's over so quickly yep. that they're not ready for that next step because they didn't have any plans. They just had all this fame, all this fortune, all this stuff, and it's all gone as fast as it showed up, and now they're not prepared. Yep. Or they, so, they play good enough to get a big contract, and then they just kind of, kind of skate their way through it. I want you to think about college football for a second. Remember how hard people used to play in college football? Yeah. You committed to a school. You, first off, you went to every practice, every – camp everything you could in your high school career to get noticed by a college then they get into college and they ball out right they yep. do everything they can to be the best dang player they can be on the field just in the hopes that somebody notices them yep so they can make it to the nfl make it to the major leagues whatever you know sport they're in and get paid so you the best way that i always describe it to any employee is Work like you're a college football player. Don't work like you're the don't work like you're the NFL player. Correct. Because the NFL player doesn't have the same grit. Right. He already thinks he won. Let your competitors work like the NFL player while you work like the college ball player. Now, I say remember what it used to be like because now the nil has been introduced and it's completely, in my opinion, wrecked all of college sports oh, yeah. of that. Hundred percent. But that's a conversation for another day and i'm sure there's enough people listening to this that are fired up by that same thing but um my point being is that's the way you should be thinking about life work like you are looking for that big contract and i always try to outwork the other guy you, you always have to outwork. Always. like you have to outwork the competition and you have to outwork those around you like your own your own employees your own co-workers if you all are competing all the time to outwork each other you are going to be successful but sure. when you're willing to let somebody else outwork you and let them carry the weight, you're probably not going to go very far. No, nope, you're not. You're gonna. You might be successful, but you're not going to grow. You're gonna just kind of stay flat, right? Stay mediocre. You got to be willing to outwork those around yeah. you. And again, it's just going back to what we were talking about. You got to slow down sometimes. Like it's easy to get ahead of yourself and think you know where you're going, but just slow down, embrace the moments, take in what you're dealing with. Sometimes it means embrace the. The shit, right? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, what do we what do we have here? We got a rule here at Shop Saber. I've always told all the all of the employees, and one of the rules I have, it's the unwritten rules of Shop Saber, which is its own story for another day. Most of them are <laughs> just made up for fun. But one of them was embrace the suck. Because some days are gonna suck. Yep. I tell yeah. every employee that. Like I promise that it's not gonna be roses and sunshine every day. I promise you that. Because yep. <laughs> if you want me to lie to you and tell you it's gonna be roses and sunshine, like ninety percent of jobs are gonna tell you it during an interview. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that too, but the reality is some days are just hard work. Yeah. Some days we have to do things we don't want to do because nobody else is going to do them. But I can assure you, embrace the suck because it's not going to last forever. Correct. Storms don't last forever. And that's the reason why we do it. We push through it so we can get to that next goal. And I, you know, I'm a firm believer. My dad used to tell me when life starts to challenge you, it's usually setting you up for whatever is up next in your life. Yep. Preparing you for that. Yeah, it's preparing you for whatever is down the road. So you just got to like embrace it, take it in. Use it as an opportunity to learn things. You know, really just get yourself to that next level. Absolutely. Are you still upset about your Gatorade? Or now are you okay with it because you're going to embrace the suck? I'm okay with it because I just have to have something to drink or my throat gets dry and I can't talk anymore. So just kind of take what you can get. There it is. It's not worth getting upset about. Nah, see, look, at you've come so far in the last hour. See, I learned from that and I'll just embrace the suck, which is this Gatorade Zero. <laughs> And it'll prepare me for the happiness. I wish Gatorade is. Zero. I wish Gatorade would hear this and they'd send you a case of Gatorade Zero. That would be. Awesome. I would share it with my coworkers. I'd just take it all and tell them that you don't get. It. But this is. I'd this, sponsor the whole show by Gatorade Zero for the rest of the year. This is preparing. And I'd me. make you announce the sponsorship every time. This sad day is preparing me for when I get Powerade Zero back in my life. Oh, Tomorrow. you didn't hear they discontinued it. I have a whole bunch at home. So why did you bring the Zero? Because the ones I have at home are smaller bottles. <laughs> Take up more room in the fridge. I have to drink more of them in a day. Too much walking back and forth to the fridge. There's so many factors that go into it. I'd just rather <laughs> stop them. And if you get the, buying the bigger bottles, it's a better price. What? Yeah. So you basically made a really good case for the Gatorade Zeros that you basically just said. No, I mean, just in general. And the Powerade makes a bottle the same size. I, I'm speechless right now. I, I've said nothing that's vouched for the crud that this is. And you know what I know we both can agree on? I'm just embracing the suck. You know what we both can agree on? <laughs> okay. 
shopsaber.com we can't agree on that i knew we could agree on that yes go shopsaber.com check out some of the new videos some of the stuff we've been posting rodney's been crushing it lately he's got some cool stuff coming um we have a lot of new videos on our youtube channel coming as well so make sure you're out there you uh subscribe to our youtube channel and then we're in march it's kind of march you know it's the spring uh what are you spring to spring into savings it's march madness whatever you want to call it it's gonna snow it's gonna snow you ain't gonna be here. I'm not gonna be here to enjoy it. Hope it's snowing tonight and you get snowed in. Nah, I hope not. That'd be sweet. But uh, yeah, no, it's just <laughs> like I said. There's a lot going on right now. So if you're thinking about that next step for your business and you're trying to figure out how you can slow down, you know, to to go faster, maybe it's investing in some CNC equipment. You know, I know we've talked about a lot of business stuff today, but ultimately, what keeps this show going is you supporting Shop Saber equipment. So don't forget to go out. Like us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, X. TikTok, X. MySpace. MySpace. Yeah, all of those. All of those. Make sure you get your AOL.com email, too, while you're at MySpace. And, uh, yeah, reach out to us, though. Like I said, send us an email if you want more information on CNC machines. But it really is. Like, the, the future of your company really depends on what you're doing today, and we'd love to be a part of it. I mean, I think that's something that I, I put my plug. That's my plug. Shop Saber. Love it. You should love it, too. Correct. What's your favorite color? Not orange, Gatorade Zero. It should be blue. Blue. Shop Saber Shop Blue. Shop Saber Blue. <laughs> See? I missed the easy joke. Uh, I know. We, we've gotten every... I, we used to do a segment here when we invited guests, and we asked at the very end. We used to ask questions. It was called Rapid Fire. We should bring that back. We should bring a guest in here, and then you come up with questions, I come up with questions, and it was just random questions, but one of the questions was always favorite color, and then we, if they didn't say blue, it was automatically wrong. And then the other question we used to ask him was, what was your favorite website? And people would come up with like ESPN. I'd say, if it's not shopsaber.com, it's wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the only two questions they had Sorry. right answers on. But Good stuff. Maybe we'll bring that back. Right we'll after we get guests. JB in here to do a podcast. We, oh, should I'm we glad JB? you brought an idea to the table, though. What was my idea? To do the question and answer segment. I, we should do it. I brought up. The JB podcast. Now you got we got a lot of ideas. Going we got on. ideas. The ideas are flowing. I guess now it's my turn to come up with one because you just came up with one. There we go. We got to keep going. You know what we should have? Maybe our audience can come up with one. That'd be cool. Shoot an email to nick at shopsaber dot com. No, that's not right. Nicholas at shops. I'm sorry, I forgot. There's two nicks. N i c h o l a s. Nicholas at shopsaber. At shopsaver. Com. I'm sorry about that. The other Nick's the other like, Why Nick's am I getting like, so many emails? Podcast. He's gonna forward them. This must be meant for you. This must be meant for <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, Nick. So, I forgot you were the yeah. second Nick. Right. You you didn't get your name. He calls me first worst. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now going to refer to you as yeah. I'm going to introduce the podcast from now on. <laughs> I'm your host, Brandon, and I'm here with the first worst. That's funny. That's what we're going to do from now on. Well, you know what? We got to get back at it. So with that, I'm Brandon. And I'm Nick. Thanks for talking shop with Shopsaver.